as every mother wants that her, her child should get the job. Whichever way it is possible, she'll try to give joy to her children. In the same way, this Kundalini has only one power, how to give joy to her own children, and she does that. Supposing, I mean, I don't know about modern mothers, but normally if I would go and say to my mother, teach me how to be angry, she will say, you go and cut your nose. <laughs> if I tell her that, tell me how to tell lies, she'll say, go and cut your tongue. If I say, tell me how to see bad things in others, she'll say, take out your eyes is better. All these ideas that we harbour within ourselves make a very big problem for Kundalini to enter into your attention. Now people always ask, Mother, how are we to grow, what should we do? That's why I say introspection. There should be introspection. What do I want in this life? I should be able to love many more people without any lust or greed or expectations. All right. Then the floods of abstract love will flow. She gives you witness state, she gives you peace. How many things she has to give you by which you become so powerful, so very powerful. No one can trouble you. She gives you security, she gives you peace, she gives you wisdom. But if you want to ask for stupidity, she cannot do it, it's impossible. She hasn't got it with her. So every Sahaja Yogi who has to grow must know what is in store with your own Kundalini. So now if you try to do the other way down, you jump on the left or the right side. Jump on the left side, then you start moving on the left side then you can become anything. Uh, whatever we hear about people, the way they murder and rape and this and that and all these things start coming in very easily because that energy lies beyond the Kundalini. Because you move on that side, all right, you want boots, have them. You want diseases? Have them. You want to indulge into uh, filthy things? Have the filth. 
whatever you want, you can have it. Also, that is available. Nobody can stop you. You want to be sly, you want to be uh, talking behind the backs, all right, go ahead. This is also very common, I've heard that the Sahaja Yogis, especially ladies, go on talking behind about others, discussing. This is how we can never grow. If you have to talk, only talk good about others. Otherwise don't talk, best is. These things are not going to help us. Now we are not here in this world at this stage to build a more churches or temples or mosques, no, I had enough of that, I had enough of con uh, problems. So now we want to make for ourselves a board of love and purity, but those who are residents are not. Then how can you have love? It will be always jealousies and uh, selfishness and all those things there. So when we talk of the light of the Kundalini, we have to understand that it light, this light spreads in your life, outside your life and expresses itself in a very, very beautiful manner. Everyone says that Sahaja Yogis look very different from others. There's a glow on their face, there's a, they look like flowers, so many. Relaxed, they're very beautiful people. For example, in Kabela people were so impressed, they said, these are young people and they have come here, they are not fighting over this, there are no hooligans among them. They were quite surprised, how could you be so sensitive? So many of you, so many people, if they gather anywhere, they can go amok in no time. I mean, even a smaller group can become mad for no rhyme and reason, they go mad. So this collective behavior of yours was so much seen clearly by the simple village people. For that you have to just desire, you just have to desire and this pure desire works out in the right direction. Otherwise whatever you desire you can get it, you want money, all right, have it, move to the right side get money this way, get money that way, do what you like. Then you want to kill somebody, all right, get to the right side. You can get many people who will go and kill anybody they want to. Then you want some publicity or something, all right, get to the right side. All these things can happen whatever you want according to the movement that you have. But for ascent, your desire should be, pure desire to get to that greater personality of love and beautiful relationships. Today you are worshipping your Kundalini, you are also worshipping the Adi Kundalini. Now you have to find out what are we doing as far as the Adi Kundalini is concerned.
when you worship the Adi Kundalini, the reflection in you, which is your own Kundalini, feels very happy. Also the deities feel happy. In that happy mood, you can achieve a very much deeper experience, that's a fact. But to keep it up, you have to meditate, otherwise all these stands will go back, slipped up, which have come out in the puja. I know everyone likes to come to puja, they enjoy it, but you should understand that what do we get in this puja? You come here, desire for that higher life. But try to get out of this every day to day, it's nonsensical life. If you want, you can do it. It's again a question of your wanting. So throughout it is want. What is your desire? We have desire like children. Some people want to have children. After the children are born, then they say, wow, what these children, God save me. then you want to have money. And most of these money people are now in jail. Then you want to have fame. The fame of the people never helps them. Only it gives you problems because of jealousies and all kinds of things. If fame was such a good thing, why should people be jealous? So the power of Kundalini, which is your own mother, which, has to, which uh, has to rise, which has to come up, which has to manifest itself because of your pure desire. So in your introspection, in your pujas, in your meditation, if you see for yourself why are you meditating, it is for pure desire of compassion and love to be awakened within us. You are, you are already in the meditation, you are already growing, the growth has started. And you grow so fast that this shell, which is this human conditioning and egos will just break open. And then this small little thing which is only in the triangular bone, Imagine in a, there's a very little space in the strangler mode that it comes out and manifests and can save the whole world. Just see the magnificence, the expansiveness, the greatness of this Kundalini which was within you and which came up in its full strength and has shown tremendous things. Such people are the really great people and not the people who are trying to show off some sort of a brand cloth they wear and try to show off. Yeah. All these silly ideas and stupidities have to be given up by such So that 
this Kundalini wears the beautiful flowers, your words become fragrant. Your glance becomes soothing. Your smile becomes satisfying. Everything, all your being is emitting nothing but goodness, righteousness, peace, above all joy. And the joy we feel now, together when we were yesterday clapping and singing songs and feeling the joy at a very simple, simple music concert, without any drugs, without any shouting, screaming, nothing, very simple. The joy we were feeling, it was because our Kundalini was dancing. She was so happy because what were you asking there? Nothing but the enjoyment of collectivity. Collectivity doesn't mean that we all should be stuck together with some glue or something or we all become like Gibraltar, rock of Gibraltar, no, it doesn't mean that. It means wherever you are, you are connected. That is collectivity. But connecting doesn't mean that <laughs> you hate that person, no. You are connected means you love that person, you are concerned about that person. The connection, the connecting line is of love and not of hatred. So when you are connected with another person or persons, then you are in collectivity. But people will live together and every day break each other's heads. Some of them really give me headaches, I tell you sometimes, because they are nowhere near the real growth of Sahaja Yoga. So you may be in America, you may be in India, you may be anywhere, you are just connected and you are concerned. As soon as there is a problem somewhere, into any part, any part of, in, of the world, you are connected and you are effective, you can manage. But if you are not connected and you are just glued together, it's very inconvenient to live under such circumstances. I think people don't even understand the meaning of collectivity. Where there's not the other, ananya, where there's not the other, there's no other personality. These personalities, are separated from you because of left and right or could be both. But you are yourself fully when you are absolutely detached and your Kundalini is dancing, you are alone and never alone. This oneness with the whole gives you all the security that you want, all the joy you want. And that's why Kundalini awakening means collectivity. Unless and until you want pure collectivity in your being, Kundalini won't rise. I feel sad sometimes when people tell me, this gentleman is like this, this lady is like this and she, she just says things like that, 
and she tries to put down her uh, orders or some man like that. Then I really can't understand what are they doing here. We don't want Hitlers. This attitude of ours so far has been on a different level, like acquire more money, acquire more wealth, acquire more houses, acquire more cars, acquire more wives, husbands, whatever, children. But the whole thing changes in Sahaja Yoga. You enjoy everything, all right? This is your all, doesn't matter whosoever it may I am enjoying. It's better not to pay for it and enjoy other people's money. <laughs> this carpet is not mine, very good, but it's excellent. It's beautiful, I'm enjoying. Maybe the one who has got this one must be worried about something, it might get spoiled or something, but I'm enjoying. So when this detachment comes, really enjoy everything. And in that detachment only you enjoy others also, because you are so detached about it. Don't want anything with anyone, only person to person you enjoy. That means you enjoy the spirit of another person through your spirit, atmaneva atmanet. It is through the spirit only you enjoy another spirit. And then the Spirit itself is, as you know, is the source of knowledge. The light of the Spirit is the light of love, compassion, forgiveness, everything. All that starts shining in, through your faces. I mean, from faces you can make out a surgery. There's no need to put hands and see. But you know this is a surgery can't be anything else. So the relationship with the Adi Kundalini is that it is the reflection of the Adi Kundalini. Now the reflection, supposing you take an Indian mirror, you look in the mirror and you find you look like nothing on earth, it will just cut you into three pieces maybe or anything. But if you take a Belgian mirror, say, then the reflection is correct, full, but still not three-dimensional. But this is a four-dimensional reflection, four-dimensional reflection, it is called as Turiya state. And that four-dimensional personality, you have reflected because of your reflector of your desire. The reflector is the desire and the reflection is complete. So, when you worship the Adi Kundalini, what you are trying to do is to cleanse your Kundalini as well as please the deities. Because this is an object, it is object, it is not to be changed. But the reflection can change. The movement of Kundalini also depends on the temperament of the person. What sort of a desire he has for this Kundalini to rise? First of all, there are people who doubt. They don't even believe there's Kundalini. All right, even if they believe, they say, oh, the air might be coming out of something else. They don't want to believe. So it's dishonesty. <coughs> Kundalini 
Kundalini cannot give you dishonesty. It can give you honesty and faith in honesty. <coughs> So she gives you faith in goodness, faith in honesty, not just by sermon or lecture, nothing by reading Bible or anything, but actually by actualizing the experience. <coughs> now, supposing you want uh, to go to the garden, suppose. Just you want to go to the garden. And suddenly you'll find in the garden. Then you will know that your desire is pure, that's why it has worked out. I, how am I in the garden? Has garden walked to me or I have walked into the garden? All such things go on happening within you. This way are miracles as they call it, miracles of such a... It's not that. It's the pure desire works it because it is powerful. It just works it. And when it works, it works the whole thing out, you develop that faith within yourself. So that faith, if it is within you, Nobody can challenge that faith, which is not a blind faith but an open eyes, experienced faith which is established within you, cannot be challenged. If you have the faith, it will be done. That's why I always say, though, don't say even offhand things because they are such a piece, you are connected. If you say, let the plane be late, it will be. There is no need to say such things. We have had so many experiences like this. I've been telling Sahaja Yogis not to say something offhand because you must know you are connected. Your pure desire is now being fulfilled and you are now connected, now you are divine, you are realized souls, you are very different from others, you can't imagine. I can't talk like this to anyone. Take any judge, for example, even from France. I can't explain anything to them or talk to them. It's beyond their mind. But for you all this subtle knowledge is just being absorbed because your Kundalini is absorbing. Now, as it is, you know, I always perspire too much. Why? Because I go on ab absorbing your heat. I absorb so much that I perspire, so much despite the fact that you people are having a nice cool breeze and I'm feeling hot. So this your Kundalini also absorbs. But whatever you absorb is absorbed by back by me. But that becomes like a barometer. Immediately you know, this is this, this is that, he is very hot, he is like this. You immediately know, without even thinking, without for asking, without any desire, you know that this one is like that. But the same fellow will be quite friendly with others, it's all right, but you just can't stand. Because your Kundalini is a barometer and she tells you what's wrong with others, with yourself. Now, for example, Agya is a problem, Agya. Everybody, mother, Agya is a problem, Agya is a problem. Means I am egoistical. No one says that, means that. So you are the one who can know about yourself, that is self-knowledge, and also you can know about others because of the Kundalini's purity, it's the reflector. And the more you become a better reflector, the more Kundalini shows. So, 
For us it is important to know that our Kundalini is awakened, that is the pure desire, that's the pure mother of ours, each man has got a separate mother, individual mother and that this Kundalini, whichever we have our own separate, different from others in a way that she, her, her, uh, no, her awareness about us is different. But in her function, in her methods, she is just the same in everyone. She, she knows about me, she knows about you, she knows about you, so she is different in a way, in the knowledge. But the way it she works in everyone is just the same. You wouldn't find somebody's kundalini in the stomach, somebody's in the throat. It's in the same place and it moves the same way, it cures the same way, it works the same way, except that it has the knowledge. For example, if you have two Mercedes cars, they work the same way, exactly the same. But supposing if I have to go from here, to, say, Frankfurt, then the road is circuitous, so she has to go in a circuitous way. But another Mercedes which has to go on a straight route, it will go on a straight route. But the working is the same. Only the knowledge she has about you in particular, she knows you very well out and out, remember this, you cannot cheat her. She knows you very well. And that is the reason why today we are here to worship our Kundalini, to give her all the credit that, Oh Mother, she has given, you have given us these great powers. You have given us this certain knowledge within ourselves. You have given us the love which encompasses the whole. And the more and the more you become aware of her connections, very, very delicate connections, then you will be amazed. In one of my photographs which came out, you must have seen many, many lines going like that, but very thin lines, sharp, thin. This is how we are. Now we are our realizers. Only thing, if we have to develop ourselves and grow, we have to ask for, desire for something very beautiful. But our attention is moving on nonsensical things, how will you grow? That's why I said we have to meditate, so we get into thoughtless awareness, by which we allow the Kundalini to grow. I hope after today's program people will pay attention to their own Kundalini and not to the defects of other people. First you must grow and develop a personality of that compassion and love and everything. Then only you'll be amazed, you grow into something really, a beautiful picture of her perfection as a human being. So may God 